We basically uh, had a solution where we were going to take a bunch of script ideas from another solution and bring them into FileMaker. And trying to do that translation it would be very tedious to go line by line and try and convert it into some sort of FileMaker script. And so the idea would be to try and take up as much of that, like if we could just take it directly from ChatGPT, drop it into FileMaker and your script's like ready to go, like that would be awesome. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm gonna hit record so that I don't forget to hit record. Okay. Okay. Yeah. La 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 <laughs> la. We, we should record that part sometime and go ahead and leave it. In. <laughs> yeah. Little outtakes. <laughs> right, right, right. That's right. right. I'm going to put on a phone, phone to mute. Come on, phone to mute. Warm ups. Yeah. Oh. Stretching. Oh. Stretching exercises. Right. Oh, yeah. So phone's on, phone's yeah. on mute. The rain in Spain <laughs> falls mainly in the plain. Plain. Okay. Do it with a mouthful of marbles, right? Sorry. Well, it's time for the DevCast. We're here with our team of intrepid developers. We don't have the whole team here. Looks like some other people are busy, but we've got the core. John, it looks like you are on the road. Where are you joining us from today? Uh, I'm on a short little jaunt, uh, completely unbusiness related to Las Vegas. Just uh, just did uh, one of the Red Rocks Canyon hikes yesterday. Oh, cool. exciting. And you, they, they have very, very attractive curtains. Okay. That's the that's the Mar Marriott uh, Marriott Grand Chateau. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I'm traveling too. I'm in I'm in Yakima, Washington, at the Hilton Garden Inn because I just signed closing documents on my new house. So, yay! And congratulations. And Zandon, welcome to the program. Hey. What's going on with you? I'm doing great. I'm in uh, Seattle, uh, and it's actually a sunny day, so that's super exciting. Very, very rare this time of year. Russell, how are you today? Welcome to the show. I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm also actually quite a bit of sun peering through, so I have my blinds open to take advantage of the uh, the natural light. Jacob. <laughs> Steely eyed yes. missile man, how are you today? <laughs> Pretty good. Just uh staying warm inside. It's actually cold in California, so uh got a jacket on today. Or just yeah, you look bundled up. <laughs> so uh, yeah. so great at and Joe, <laughs> where are you coming to us from today? I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, as uh, as most days. It's, uh, you know, one of my favorite quotes, and I forget off the top of my head who says it, but it's, when you spend a lot of time outside, the weather is a pretty interesting topic. And so uh, I love talking about the weather in different places. <laughs> uh, it's nice and uh, rainy here, which we've needed it. We're in, a, we're in a pretty massive drought, and so we're getting a good inch, a little over an inch of rain over the next couple of days. Much needed. It's kind of nice. That's great. Well, the temperature is rising here. It was... It was overcast when I got here a couple of days ago, but it's going to rise a couple of degrees a day until Saturday. It's going to hit 70 degrees in the afternoon. So, not wow. super exciting. But nobody cares about that. What we care about is FileMaker and coding and all things nerdy. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is chat GPT. But... Zandon is going to tell us how we can actually use this with FileMaker. I've been using it with FileMaker. I've been asking it to write scripts, but then I have to kind of take a screenshot of it, what it did, and put it over on another monitor and refer to it. Well, I just rewrite the script my, myself. It would be great if you could get that script directly into FileMaker, and you've got an idea. So tell us, Shannon, what, what yeah. are your thoughts? Well, that was it. So that was the idea is we, um, we, we basically 
uh, had a solution where we were going to end up having to transcode, you know, basically take a bunch of scripts from script ideas from another solution and bring them into FileMaker. And trying to do that translation um, would take would be very tedious to go line by line and try and convert it into some sort of FileMaker script. And so the idea would be to try and take up as much of that, like if we could just take it directly from ChatGPT, drop it into FileMaker and your script's like ready to go, like that would be awesome. Um, even to get like 80 or 90% of that task out of the way is still um, a huge accomplishment. So the test was to see how well we could do that and what would be involved. And so the idea, the concept was to... Um, have ChatGPT write the script for you, and then um, and then somehow figure out how to get that into ChatGPT or not ChatGPT into uh, FileMaker. So um, I can go ahead and share my screen, and we can sort of dive into it. And um, is everybody familiar with um, with GPTs, GPTs in ChatGPT? So GPTs are a way to sort of customize and create. Uh, create your own special code for ChatGPT to follow a, a prompt that, as it were, that it uses when you want it to do certain things. And so you can create a GT, GPTS, you can share it with your friends, you can share it in a, uh, I think they have a store now that you can share it in. And it allows you to really control sort of what ChatGPT is going to deliver. So we realized pretty quickly that just blindly asking ChatGPT to, uh, to write a write a FileMaker script, it would sometimes get things all, it would do, do a great job. And sometimes it would be like really creative and make up stuff. Right. So we needed to ways of really hone in the script creation process. Um, and so using the G GPTS, which is um, basically like a system prompt before it actually runs its uh, request is, um, is seemed like a really good option. So, so that's what we've got here. We've got a uh, GPTS. Um, so, and, and you can share this with your friends and whatnot. And basically, you can ask it a question, and it'll build you a FileMaker script. Um, so, an example of that here is here's one of the examples: write a script for tracking inventory. Right. Um, we give that prompt, and um, and here it'll go ahead and write it out. Um, some fun parts about building this out uh, so that it would work had to do with. Um, defining all of the available script steps so that it didn't go off <laughs> off script as it were and start to sort of making filemaker script uh script calls that, that didn't exist um and so you can see here it, it went through and it gave us a nice uh, code snippet for a filemaker script right and at that point as a developer if you wanted to pull this into your solution you would have to go line by line and recreate this in filemaker um, so in order to sort of bridge that gap, uh, we began testing what if we could just bring this into FileMaker, parse it as a text file and convert it and translate it into the actual script itself. And how could, how could we go about doing that? And that brought us to, uh, of course, FileMaker. And the idea is you bring it in, um, paste it in, you can paste it in or you can put it in a script step or whatever. And then hit a button, and it's going to um, script or put it into a clipboard. I don't believe there's any actual way to automate script creation in FileMaker, um, but you can capture all of the XML. And the way a little bit deeper dive on that. So if we're in FileMaker and we have a script step, uh, something like. Um, set variable and we got some values in here let me uncompet this and i i copied this line out using apple b so i just copied that we can take it into a text editor that has maybe a bun bundle for working with filemaker and here i'm using textmate and there's a filemaker bundle for textmate and it allows you to get the snippet from the clipboard so we can see what the clipboard is actually holding for FileMaker. And so here's a here's that script step in FileMaker clipboard format, which is an XML. And if we break this apart, we've got some um, base information here at the beginning of the XML and the end of the XML that encompasses the entire thing. And because it's in the clipboard, 
if we were in FileMaker and we went in here and we did a command V, it would paste that down, right? So it's just using that XML to paste. Um, <clears throat> so given uh, that we were able to do that, um, the next part was to how, how do we create an entire script? Because you can also, of course, select multiple lines and do a copy, so on and so forth. And then if you go into uh, your text editor, um, get that snippet. I think we and yeah, so we got our script from ChatGPT, and then um, and then we need to somehow get that into FileMaker. And uh, of course, you can always go line by line and recreate the script, but we wanted to be able to put it into FileMaker and um, have it automatically recognize it and create the script for you. And there's a couple of different ways to do that, but um, the only clear path we could see is using uh, some tools to copy from the clipboard and then be able to paste it into the actual script since there isn't a, an actual script creation um, process that you could do automated in FileMaker that I'm, that I'm aware of. Um, and there may be, there may be something under the hood that I don't know about. So yeah, be sure and let us know if, uh, if you have any ideas on how to accomplish that. But as it is currently, we can access the clipboard data and we can, um, copy and paste that. And so here's what the clipboard data actually, here's a, an idea of how the clipboard data works. So if I'm in a, um, new script and I create a line, uh, so variable, if we want to put this into our, uh, Another script we can just copy using Apple C. Um, and then if we open up a text editor like TextMate, we can, um, TextMate has a bundle for allowing us to interact with FileMaker. We can use a FileMaker bundle that gets the snippet from the clipboard. And so we get the snippet and this is what that snippet actually looks like for that specific script step. Um, it's wrapped in, it's an XML and it's wrapped with um, this FM XML snippet to encompass the code. And then this part here is the actual script, single script step. And if we, um, if we're in uh, um, a full script, we can select multiple lines, right? Copy those all out and we can do the same, same thing. So we can, we can easily uh, capture the information from the clipboard and then modify it and put it back in. So this would be that uh, everything that we got from that clipboard. So the idea was to build this XML in and put it in the clipboard and then be able to uh, just paste it back in uh, the entire script. And so that's that's sort of the basic process. Um, it was a little bit more involved, but, um, but we'll get into that in just a second. So if we're back in ChatGPT, we've got our script, right? We can copy the code. And then what we need to do is we need to take that and somehow go line by line and parse it and uh, create the individual script steps from what we're able to parse. And that is where we run into a little bit of problems, but we muddle through it as best we can. So if I copy that out and I paste it in here to our FileMaker script from ChatGPT window, um, you can see we, we, it, it, we have everything sort of like it should look, ready to go. Um, we can run a script and copy it to the clipboard then go into our script editor in FileMaker. Create a new script and go ahead and paste it. And so uh, you can see we've got the comments, uh, we enter the find mode, we set fields from our inventory search, assuming fields exist for the ID and the name. And um, these are some places where it had, you know, as we look at it, it says set field or table <laughs> item ID. Right? So that's not a real one. You would need to go back in and you need to adjust this and say, okay, this is this is going to be in the inventory field and what, what field it needs to be, right? Um, and then it goes ahead and, and put that information in for the criteria. And again, it's we're just comment it's commenting it out if it if it doesn't know what it is. Uh, so that you can quickly update these in your actual FileMaker script. Um, and this can be pitched a little bit better. We know schema of the FileMaker solution, and we provide that information to ChatGPT. But in a very generic sense, um, we're sort of wrapping it so that it still still works, uh, still works even if it doesn't know what the scheme is. And it just gives you the prompts to be able to do that. Um, you can see we got to perform find. If it finds, you know, the found zero, it's going to create a new one. Again, it's going to go ahead and set the fields that would normally be uh, attributed to. 
on invoice creation, so on and so forth. So that's, in a nutshell, the process. Um, there is a little bit of overhead, as you can see, where we're, we have to go back in and modify things if we haven't defined it very well in our GPTS for the solution that we're trying to put this information into. Um, but automating it was sort of the, the big key. Did you guys have any questions at this point? So did you paste that? Did you create a field in? I'm still here. <laughs> Sorry. What? Did if you go back to the to the yeah? Let me let me go through the script. So the script itself. Um, yeah, we're this file maker. Yep. And we so do uh, we copy field the field in your application. That it gave us from ChatGPT. Yeah, and this was just more for this demo purpose. Like, you don't actually need to. Um, there's different ways of handling it. We could throw up a prompt dialog where you paste it in the prompt, um, and it's stored as a variable. So the intent of this would be to have just a single script that does everything for it, or a, a couple of scripts that would manage it all. Um, and so that's the way that this is sort of wrapped up. For ease of use to show kind of how it's going, we have a field we paste it into, and then we have a button that calls the one script that loads this text into the script to be able to parse it. And so this is the script that does a chat GPT parse script steps. And it basically goes through and gathers the uh, the script code, right? Whether, and we, like I said, we can pull this from a text field, we can set it as a variable from a prompt, however you want to do it. Um, and then we go through that line by line and we parse it out. And this is where the interesting part goes in trying to build it uh, out to the XML. Um, because there's there's a very, fairly precise structure, but there's a lot of different ways that it could be that ChatGPT might might spit it out, and we need to account for that in order to reference it correctly. Um, some other uh, factors here, um, like as we go through, I was testing like these are this is a list of every single uh, FileMaker script step, right? So we could find out as we build them which, how well they're gonna work. Um, and of course you have to, there's a whole bunch of different variables for different types of script steps. So if I came down here to, uh, I come to the very end, we've got one for show custom dialogue. There's a couple of different ways we can show custom dialogue and depending on what it is, is gonna give us different definitions back. So uh, if we have normally if in a script dialogue, right? Um, We'll look at this one script dialogue has the title and a message and then you have your buttons you know this might be okay this might be cancel and you can specify certain variables on them and you have input fields uh, that can be used so you could say oh i want this to go into a field or i want to set it into a variable or something along those lines i had a couple of occasions where chat gpt very confidently wrote me a script and it turns out that at least one of the functions that it said to use it wasn't real. Uh, uh, doesn't exist. Yes. Doesn't yes. exist. And so when you were training your special chat GPT instance, did you do anything special to try to uh, keep it on the, on the straight and narrow? Yeah. Um, so when you're creating a GPTS, and this of course could change in the future, right? This is sort of a, everybody, we're all learning new stuff for how to interact with these large language models. But when you create a GPTS, currently you give it some instructions, you can give it some uh, conversation starters, you can give it some knowledge base that it's gonna rely upon and you can tell it additional stuff. Um, what we can do is of course give it really precise instructions to get what we want. We can also give it some knowledge. And so in this instance, I gave it some knowledge of Valkyrie script steps. And so this document here, I'll show you what it looked like, um, was basically a list. So this make, this helps keep us going off script where we're using all of the predefined FileMaker script steps. And, um, and I try to be precise to tell it to only use these script steps. And that helps reduce the chance that it's gonna just magically create a script step from, <laughs> from its, imagine, its own imagination, you know, like, <laughs> like that took make a idea. Ink transaction. <laughs> well, that would be magical. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, 
Yeah. So, so by giving this sort of controlled knowledge, it, it helps really refine the large language model in this instance, chat GPT to give us the output that we're looking for and, and try not to go outside of those, those confines. And um, even, even then there is a possibility that we either haven't written, uh, we haven't written the script step to accommodate every single script step or the search maybe just doesn't quite work. And in those instances, if it doesn't know, in testing, like I said, we started going through all of the different script steps. So if I if I enable uh, one with all of the script steps here, and I'll disable this one, um, we'll run this, and I'll do the uh, copy to clipboard. Then I come in and I create a new script. Um, this is basically just a list of, of script steps. Many of them we haven't written anything for. And so... Uh, in an instant, we don't know what to do. it's going to give us a to do missing script step set error logging. Since we haven't written a condition yet in our script to be able to account for that, right? Um, set error logging isn't really a script step we use a whole lot, so we'll, we'll probably add something like that in. But we wanted to hit the major ones first. You know, missing script step halt script. Um, we don't again use that a whole lot, so, uh, so you know we might add that in. in uh, later, you know, the, the, the goal would be, of course, to have all script steps in there, and then all of these would be able to be parsed properly. Um, there's other ones, you know, sample, cut, copy, paste, clear, several different ones, select all. So there's a few different ones that we haven't, you know, had, haven't gone through and accounted for just yet. Um, and so knowing that you can still have the script, the majority, like I said, the majority of the script come in, it's got, you know, any comments about it. And then if it doesn't have the script step, it's going to let you know and display what, you know, what needed to be what needed to be in the actual script. So yeah, that way, if there is a problem, you're notified. Go ahead. So um, I had a couple of questions. One, when you're setting up the, the GPT, um, part, part of that process is telling it um, not to go outside, not to make stuff up and, you know, being pretty precise about setting up the prompt that defines the GPT ahead of time. And one of those things is telling it not to try, trying to set it up so it can't do hallucinations. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then of course it's all prompt engineering at that point. Right. Uh, so this is my instructions. I say, you are a FileMaker expert, <laughs> which I mean, specialized in writing FileMaker scripts, you know, and, uh, yada, 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 only use one script step per line. Cause sometimes it'll try and put two script steps on one line checking each line after it is written. I'm not sure if that's making any difference. Uh, put any comments on a separate line in the code because it had been trying to put comments on, in the actual code line. So that would, that was causing different issues. Um, but yeah, telling it to, um, you know, be concise, focus on only delivering the script, only use the responses to user request. Your response will be concise. Let me see here. There was, oh yeah, here it is. Your primary focus is to adhere to the latest FileMaker docu documentation, ensuring that all scripts are compliant and efficient. You will provide only the script response used. And uh, I thought I had a line in here that said only use the knowledge from the script steps knowledge base, but, um, but it is referencing that. And it's actually been really good about not hallucinating other script steps that don't, that aren't in that batch. Um, for the most part, without this prompting, it was still writing pretty good FileMaker script code. Um, it's just every once in a while you would have more problems. So, so dialing this in, this GPTS, this system prompt, uh, would, it really would help the script creation process. And this is also where you would want to include, like, if you had a schema, right? If you were wanting to create, uh, interaction with an invoice is you want to give it the schema information so that it had it knew what your table structure was so when it goes to create a new invoice it's referencing the correct um the correct fields and so on and so forth and not just saying check and see if these exist and try and use this let's go over to joe joe you had a thought yeah thoughts uh First off, about the the conversion uh, to, uh, from the XML. If there was an available XSLT, uh, could you feed that into ChatGPT to actually have it have it spit out uh, the the script in in XML? Uh, absolutely, it it could totally do that. I think that um, if it has hallucinations in that 
in that part of the process that that would be really difficult to debug. So that's why taking it from its current structure and then managing the parsing of that in FileMaker um, seemed like a, uh, a easier task to manage and also be able to account for errors. But yeah, theoretically, you should be able to. If you can get it to be really precise in its knowledge base and only use the uh, XSLT like you're saying, that would I think that would be way way better. Um, in its general sense, uh, I think there that's a little bit harder lift. I, you'd have to compile that XSLT and then be able to sure. use it. I think it would still help for the structure, but um, but it's pretty good about being able to write the scripts uh, and then converting that into the proper XSLT would be like another step for it. Um, and you could probably do that with like Python code maybe, um, mm. and then, you know manage it manage it more efficiently in a programmatic level from the from uh, something like ChatGPT all on its own. Um, but using the FileMaker script process to handle it and properly write it out seems like it works pretty straightforward. Okay. Yeah. Well, one of the other uh, ideas that I had while you were mentioning was when you, when you described your prompt explaining that uh, the chat GPTS is a FileMaker expert. What if you were to break that into two separate roles? So you've got, you know, you've got, uh, you're, as a project manager, you're giving chat GPT uh, two roles and you're defining the roles saying this on one, uh, one role is the FileMaker expert. The other role is an XML expert. Uh, generate your FileMaker script, give, then give it to the XML expert who converts it and gives it back to the FileMaker expert. Is is that a viable? Oh, yeah, so I've, I've been I'm curious about the whole idea of roles in ChatGPT. So I wonder if that's a viable solution. Yeah, totally. Um, and it, you know, ChatGPT is like right great right now. It's evolving. There's so a, a lot of other large language models that are also competing in that space and have become really good at managing different things. Um, and we're starting to get in that space of uh, multi multi agent environments, right? So that where you're giving it a role to be able to do different things, and you're having some some sort of a an agent that's overseeing the roles or the sub agents to accomplish smaller tasks and keep it on target. Um, absolutely, that that's a much cleaner way, right? If we can hu remove humans from the equation completely, that's where we want to be. I know we'll probably be there fairly fairly soon. Like as developers, I think. You know, um, the CEO of NVIDIA has recently made a very strong statement saying that um, the English la English language is the new uh, form of coding. There's the coding uh, <laughs> is no longer uh, really a viable option if you're going to go into university and wanted to learn a CS degree that you don't really need to learn coding because uh, being able to just ask for what you want from a large language model and letting it take care of right all the minutiae code is really, it's pretty, pretty accurate, right? We're getting, we're getting there super duper fast. So, but we do have this inter inter interim of time where FileMaker is a little bit more edge than, you know, if you were having to just write Python code, um, where getting it into a, a FileMaker format is a little bit harder. Um, so yeah, bridging that gap is 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 key. But yeah, multi agent would be the way to go. Definitely have one who writes the code, one who checks it, one who tests it, one who implements it. You know, and have have all sorts of different steps. And then we just remove um, human interaction from the model. And if it runs into errors, then have some sort of error handling. But yeah, I think we're going to get there pretty quick. But hmm. well, let's go back to John, who has a follow up yeah. question. And so and so, then, so and then Russell, then Jacob. So uh, I might observe that uh, yeah. NVIDIA's CEO, NVIDIA's CEO, isn't necessarily the least biased person on earth on this topic. <laughs> um, but my uh, yep. but my question was uh, was about uh, what kinds of scripts have you found work the best here? I, I can imagine th there's certainly a continuum where where you know getting certain kinds of scripts, getting ChatGPT right certain certain types of scripts might, might not be super helpful, whereas others it, it would do a fantastic job on. Which kinds of scripts do you find work the best? 
I, you know, we'll have to play around with it. I think I, at, at this point, like just getting it to output the script is pretty straightforward. Uh, it'll often approach the problem in different ways. So if you ask the same question twice, you're not necessarily always going to get the same response. Uh, as I was, so in this, I, I have a, a pre-prompt, right? Where, let, let me go back. So we've got, you know, write a script for tracking inventory. It, sometimes when I run that, it will do, uh, it'll use transactions. And sometimes it doesn't, right? So, so there's a general question, right? And it's going to just kind of come up with whatever it feels like it wants to do. And then there's going to be some really like, if you really define what the script needs to do, then it's going to, you know, it's going to probably work a little harder to meet what your expectations are. Um, as far as what, it, I think that's just, you know, worth playing with it. And also defining, you know, the system prompt even a little bit better where maybe we want to have a preamble at every script or some sort of information about what the script is. You have other template stuff. You want to make sure your error handling is handled in a certain way and so on and so forth. And it may even be something where, you can use a combination when you're generating the script where, you know, at the point where we're in FileMaker, we can have, you know, just like at the beginning of a script, we have this, you know, this, this little part here to explain about the script. We might have error, error handling happen in the script. And we want to make sure that that gets included in every script that we're going to create. And so either having a script template or having to include that when it writes the script to follow a certain structure automatically. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, simple steps. So we want to keep it fairly simple. You want to keep it single, you know, want to have it only be able to, you know, the focus is it does one thing and does it well versus like having it do uh, a whole bunch of different things. And it, then it would be better to sort of daisy chain your scripts together to accomplish more complicated tasks. Jacob, what do you got for us? Yeah, so... Uh, the, I'm just kind of curious about the, the text mate. You had, uh, kind of showed that a little bit. There's a plugin, um, that you were using. You were saying that that converts script steps to XML by dropping them in. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, kind of leading in, into like that premise. So like if you have that, uh, that now, being generated from TextMate, what's to stop you from putting all of the script steps in this one file and then making each step known to a GPT and then chaining GPTs so that it just writes, like what Joe was saying, uh, the XML directly. So GPT chaining is now a thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can chain one GPT action to another GPT uh, to generate the yeah. same oh, yeah. kind of output. Yeah. <laughs> so you were saying to, uh, to take and have the agents automatically put the pieces together for you. And, um, that's absolute, uh, that's what we would ultimately want. Right. Um, we want to try and not touch it. Let, let the AI take care of all of that for us. Yeah. And yeah. Just so you know, yeah, I mean, it, in, in text made in a perfect add, world, right? You know, bundles. <laughs> you could use any yeah. IDE. Yeah. You could use different IDEs to get the snippet. You could also like, um, so in FileMaker, the script steps that we're doing is I'm basically like, um, we basically parse out the, the, the line itself and we're looking for, you know, for the if parts, we're looking at it and saying, uh, does it start with this? And does the you know the current line with these four letters match this? And if it does, then we want to parse that, uh, parse the, the, the information from the script line, re feeding it in, you know, like this one set error capture on. We want to take that, parse it, get the variable out of there, and then be able to uh, to load that into the XML the way that we want it to. Um, you could definitely do that might, probably more efficiently in Python if you gave it the XSLT and had a very clear definition. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, just seemed like it would be uh, from the get go uh, from moving pieces uh, more straightforward to do in FileMaker because FileMaker can handle the text parsing as well. Um, then you only have one source. We only have like, in this instance, we only have one script, but you could have just a couple of scripts that would be able to make this work. 
Um, if it was more efficient to be handled in a different way, absolutely. If we could have ChatGPT do the whole thing, that would be freaking awesome. I think now, this is also, uh, also too a, a short term gap yeah. filling. This this is a short term gap, right? Like there's a yeah. there's going to be a point where the AI will just be bridging us bridging the human interaction level different, right? Where it can use the UI, anticipate what you want it to do, and then just go ahead and write the script as though you were writing it right into FileMaker. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, now, so there's all now, sorts of different ways to bridge that gap. Writing it into uh, FileMaker, was there any consideration for like now, you know, the assistance API is is available with OpenAI? So it's essentially leveraging GPTs, but via the API? Is, was was that a consideration for this or is that too new, I guess? I don't I don't know. Maybe it didn't exist at the time. <laughs> Uh, yes, this- absolutely. That that totally works. Um, I think then you are, you do have to, um, you have to be able to generate your API keys and use an API key, and then you have to structure it in that way. And then you have costs associated with um, whenever you're doing it. So I think the lift for the general user gets a little higher, whereas you can use uh, GPTS currently. Um, these can be shared. You can share your GPTS with other people. It'll be in the store. So anybody can use this GPTS, right? They can pull it and they can ask this query and get the text that they need to load into FileMaker. So it's really a, a lot more accessible. Um, can you control it? Yeah, absolutely. If you you can control it with, with, and you don't even have to use ChatGPT. There's different language models that you could use that can be um, they have a lot more control if, and, and use functions and all, all sorts of different things that you can use using the API to accomplish what you want to do. Um, but this seems like the shortest path and the least resistive path for anybody to be able to to work with it and make it work and not have a lot of dependencies. Um, and also, those yeah. APIs, they're still undergoing a lot of change. You know, I mean, uh, it's been like, what, a year and a half? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. for, and it's gone, you know. <laughs> so yeah, their documents have changed uh, pretty drastically for the API. Uh, what have you have yeah, you noticed? If cost this, associated, like um, well, if you're using the API, it, the, the API is expensive. This is just normal GP, you know, chat GPT account. Um, in the same fashion, I hadn't tried Claude. Claude's now got its new version, and it's supposed to be pretty awesome. Um, and I haven't tri- tried any of the open source, uh, you know, um, the llama or anything like that to see how well they're writing uh, FileMaker scripts. Um, so those are other things to also keep in mind. But um, yeah, but just focusing on the one chat GPT since it had a, you know, everybody was using it. We had I had an account, I actually have an account for a couple of the different ones. But, um, but I didn't I didn't, uh, I was only going in one direction. Um, and that was, Claude didn't have an API at the time that I was working on this. So, uh. so Tandon, uh, Russell actually thought it would be interesting to allow GPT to use or write custom functions since the text is able to copy paste into the custom function and definition just to see it maybe tackle in a different way. Can you speak to maybe doing it that way? Yeah, actually, a lot of people use it for custom functions. So let's say you wanted to do something funky with the date. Sometimes it's easier to have a custom function that does that. Um, Initially, um, when I was writing this, uh, in order to parse the XML, I was using uh, custom functions um, in order to parse the XML and provide back the uh, or provide back the XML that we want. And so you can see that we've got many script steps here that are doing specifically that. So custom functions are definitely helpful. You can leverage them. Uh, I also realized though with that, when I tried to copy this into another solution or or migrated into another uh, version that custom functions are not very friendly for moving from one solution to another. And, uh, and it seems like they should be, but, um, but in this instance here, we've got a custom function and it uses the C data in the XML. Um, so if you copied this custom script function or try to import it, 
C data breaks this entire custom function, so it's not very portable. So the next revision we were working on was was changing, taking it away from using the, the custom script functions to actually generate the XML just in the script itself. Um, so we didn't have to rely on those custom functions. Um, that you know, just because of the nature of custom functions, they they're kind of hidden. They're kind of a black box. They're a little hard to access and know what's going on with them. You do have to import them, and then there can be failures when you do uh, like try and take them and, and pull them from one solution to another. So there's sort of another dependency that has a whole bunch of other things that you have to consider. So um, and solving problems works great. Uh, ChatGPT can do a really good job of creating custom functions. And I think there's been a couple of podcasts uh, about that um, and how helpful it is. But um, but yeah, I think in the instance of ChatGPT, moving away from that because these are odd dependencies that, um, that make it a little more complicated to try and figure out what FileMaker is doing outside of the normal scripting process uh, in order to, to do what, you know, get FileMaker to do what you want it to do. Well, Zandon, thank you for taking the time to kind of tackle that for us. This is a, a great topic, and I think we're going to see a lot more uh, work being done with these artificial intelligent models. I'm going to toss it back to John, see if you have, John, have our boss, he has a final comment, because we're about out of time. John, what are your final thoughts? Uh, I guess my final thought would be just if uh, if anybody has any thoughts on uh, what we're doing here. This is sort of a in there and we don't know uh, what we're doing with it in the long run. Maybe we'll use it internally. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll find that we don't. Um, and so, if, if people have thoughts on that, let us know. Um, as Zandon pointed out, it's probably a short term little project for us. In the long run, there'll be a more direct way to get scripting out of out of the large language models into FileMaker. Um, but it's an interesting experiment in the short run, and we'd love, love to be back from anybody. All right, so all you listeners out there, if you've got comments, if you've got ideas, if you've come up with a better way to do it, let us know. Come on the show. Tell us. Tell the whole world. We're happy to have you. Thank you, everybody. Russell, Jacob, Zandon, John. Uh, for Tate, Joe, for taking the time to be here today. Now, you know what I'm going to say. Get back to work.